last three years. Uh, Rod, who's not here, wanted to see what we're doing on the fellow. I can show you guys that. He usually yeah. arrives late. He'll be there. He's always late. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Eventually. It, it really, I don't understand why so he doesn't work on because we all become quite good on Trello. Yeah. He, he uh, pulled me aside at the, the OREA conference and he's like, Jack, I need to know Trello. It was this obsessed, like, yeah. you know, eyes, like, bulging. <laughs> And I'm like, know. it's not a big deal. We did a whole session pretty, on it. Wasn't yeah. he here for that? I don't get it. I think he wants to miss it. Yeah. Don't spend too much time I'll save that for him. And then, um, and then Laura wanted to know what we've added, what we've done. So I, I wrote a couple of notes down uh, in my car, actually, when I was sitting up front. Um, anything else you guys want to go over? Any any questions you have? Anything like what, 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 what have you done differently, or what are you doing differently in terms of lead generation? Yeah, yeah. So under the what we're doing yeah. differently, okay. I wrote down uh, a couple things. Uh, Mark, you were asking about lead generation, lead conversion, um, client service was another one too, right? So I can go over some of that. Okay. Um, <coughs> we, it's funny because Melissa does most of the recruiting stuff, right? Like in terms of talking with potential team members and because she was sick yesterday I went through that and then I realized that that's actually not a bad place to kind of show you guys like where we're at is to show you what we'd show a new recruit in our mm -hmm. business sure. mm -hmm. and um, but what you can see with the um, with the website is we've really put a push on for um, the brand you know I mean I come from the school of Dean Jackson where it's very like direct response driven mm -hmm. they don't care who you are right now we've got like branded cars on the road and we've got, so what we do with our agents is that they drive Mini Coopers and, uh, and it's their lease, right? So a Cooper might be 400 bucks a month and then what we do is we pay them $200 a month, kind of it's like a billboard fee for them to have the cars oh, wow. on the road, right? So for them it's good because how can you drive a car for 200 bucks, especially a nice especially one? A Cooper. And for us, I mean, we get we get agents snapping pictures, we get clients snapping pictures and texting me and posting it up on Facebook saying, you know, we saw your cars and so it's fun. It's it, that's been a good thing. But just kind of getting a, a brand out there has been has led to a lot more of like people just calling us up and saying like, hey, like I've just seen your stuff around, which we didn't have before. It's like they had to be part of one of our mailing lists to kind of know what we're about. Um, and we got clear on our purpose. I'll talk about that it's, when it's, I get into it. It's interesting that, that you say that, because whenever I ask other agents, oh, you must know Chuck when they're in Milton, like, no, we don't know Chuck, and by yeah. now, now they will. Yeah, yeah, so that, and that's it, right? It's like, don't keep me a secret kind of thing. How big is your team now, Chuck? Um, so there's uh, seven, agents out there selling and then we've got two full-time admin and then we just started at the end of last year um, we have two inside sales because we had about seven thousand leads that were just sitting there um, just waiting for somebody to reach out so we just that was a that was a game changer for us it's still a work in progress if you talk with anyone who runs an isa department there's you got to kind of go through a few experience levels before you get it right. But I'll, I'll share more about that. Um, the, but this website shows a lot of the things that were about the branding was one. Uh, joining our team. So I look now at lead generation as being three things. It's for lead generating for buyers, for sellers, and for team members. Right? Because if you speak to somebody, and, and we've seen this, the Gary Meagers and the Glenn McQueenies in the group, they've now progressed to the point where it's about the, really the limiting factor is how many talented people you can bring on board. And, uh, and because we've built the systems and the structure and everything else for so many years, that's, that's what it's been. You know, it's just been for us now, can we get more good people in that are, that are going to represent us? And I know when I look at a new team member, the only thing that I'm asking myself beyond the disc profile and all that other stuff is, could I drive to, hey Lou, Gord. Um, could I drive to Montreal with them and still like them at the end, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and, and the second question I ask is, would I buy a house from them? Because we had some people who, who kind of joined the team and didn't work out and, you know, I reflected on it later and I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. they interviewed well, they were smart, they were talented, but at the end of the day, I don't know if I fully would have trusted them to be my agent. Right? So that's that's a good lens to look through if you're, if you're looking at bringing some people on. Yeah. 
Good. So joining the team is a huge thing. The other big push we've done, guys, is the reviews. I'm getting so, my last five listing appointments have been people who basically just said, I've read your, your reviews and I want you to come see us. So we made a conscious effort to um, really, uh, a little less than a year ago, to just get more reviews. And it's, it's unbelievable what happens. I mean, that's your... Just a simple email to you or through a system? Yeah, we just send the client an email when the, when the process is done. Yeah, Laura. So are you putting them on your website or are you, like Mark has ranked my agent? Right. Or is it something on Yelp or where are they going? Yelp, see, Yelp is like, it's so hard to get a review on that bloody thing. Like, it, it, and that used to be a badge of honor, but I yeah. think they've started to actually kind of diminish in, in uh, importance because of that. Mm -hmm. so, so where are they reading them then? Facebook and okay. Google have been our two pushes. Facebook and Google. Yeah. Um, we have a program called Real Satisfied uh, for our whole company. It looks good. That's what we got to. Yeah, but the thing is, where's your customer going to? Like, they're not going to rank my agent, right? Like, they're it's just not. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So we have 90 reviews, and every single one of them is five stars. Nice. Yeah. Right. And so, but we reached out to people we knew were happy on Facebook. There's another um, review. How many do we have here? 50 or 60? 46. But yeah, look at that. Like that, it almost, I'm almost looking for a bad one because like I, I don't want it to seem inauthentic. So, so Chuck, you're, you're sending that link, I guess, straight to them so that they can just add on to it? Make it yeah, easy that's right. So yeah. we kind of tee it up and say right. this is the link okay. to follow if, if you'd like what to, to make How are your cars driving downstairs? Photoshop. I don't know how that happened. Isn't that the, the movie, uh, what's it called? Uh, yeah, that's what the car looks like right yeah, yeah. there. We had a company called um, Side Effects in Milton that did that. And uh, so another fun thing we did was we went to the Santa Claus Parade last year and we had our three minutes and, uh, and we also had, like we have my wife's uh, old Land Rover and we, that's like our staging vehicle kind of thing. And so we had we had a row of four cars going down the road. Um, if you look on the website, there's actually... I've never seen that. Um, I think it's under Plain Events, where we did the... Um, I thought we had something from the Santa Claus Parade. I know it's over in Latest News. Um, it's pretty fun, though. And, and the announcers on... Because it goes on the local cable channel, and they were like... Is this the Italian job? Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, we, and along with this is, is we, um, we took the uh, Lionel Richie brand and, and we, we said, hello, is it Santa you're looking for? So we kind of tied in the Christmas concept with some of the stuff we're doing. And we had sandwich boards on and it was a good community thing. I mean, 20,000 people out of the town of 110 or so came yeah. to that. Santa Claus parade, so it was like our coming out party for the brand and everything else. But um, but I can't stress to you guys enough how critical these are. They're just, <coughs> they, they've, they've been unbelievable for our business. So do you ask them specifically for a Google review or a Facebook review or? We just tee it up, Google, Facebook, Yelp, and we just say, you know, any way that you can write a review, we appreciate. Most people will only do one. This has right. been my experience. They don't go like multiple channels. Yeah. But it's also, you guys know that whole concept of, of like reciprocity, right? Is that people, when they say thank you, it's like, you know, if, um, like it's our default setting. There's people that, you know, decide not to move, right? You ever meet people like that? Oh, well, after the information, I'm not sure. Hey, you know what? You know what you can do to just help me out? I, I, I know you're grateful for my time. You've already said that. Can you just spend five minutes going on Google? Like that's become like just language for our team that's now. Great. Can you just go on and you know give us a, a some you know just explain how we helped you? So dumb it down for me. If I go on to Google and I put in Michelle Reed and my my thing comes up, then I just send them the link and say, can you please put a review? Yeah, it's a little tough to get the. Um, there's there's a way to get that. Oh, you have different Michelle. Rochelle Mead. That's it. Yeah, she's an author. Oh, Mead. Funny. It's she like was a right Latin course. version of your name, <laughs> Rochelle Mead. Um, that's funny. Yeah. She was the first one right there. 
the the social yeah. No, but what, what I'm looking for is like the, maybe if we did something like that, a lot of times you'll see something pop up here. So I don't know why that, again, don't, I'm not a Google expert here, but if I typed in like Charles and Advantage, which is our brand, is that pops up there. Okay. Google I don't know what it's right. Have your you registered your business with Google? Sorry? Michelle? No. Oh, well, you need why. to do that. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. This is, yeah so maybe code. that's what it is. It's yeah. Google Places. Right? They'll send you a code and then you verify it and then you will be displayed right beside the yeah. beside your name. Okay. Every time. Yeah, so you become a, a business, right? As you become an actual sort of destination from a Google standpoint. Um, the the actual re review like there's ways that you can do that. I'm doing pretty well on Google, eh? Like, there's, mm -hmm. we've kind of got that Charlton advantage, and I know, Laura, you talked about that, too, was getting that whole first page lined yeah. up with your stuff. Um, anyway, so, let me get into this whole way that we recruit. So, this is our office. We, built, we bought that about five years ago. It's about a thousand square feet of space. And, um, so this is normally what we go over with the recruit, right? About our team, what we do differently. So you can see it's almost like a buyer or a listing presentation, right? Um, who are we? You know, it just talks about you know our values and what we are misfits. and who we are. Yeah, we are. We're misfits, right? I mean, this is kind of like us in Christmas sweaters goofing off, right? I mean, that's that's the group, and I I always talk about the the whole idea of support and agent team, and I'll tell you another breakthrough for us is that we realize that one CRM is not good enough. Um, if you look at something like Top Producer or iExact <coughs> or whatever it is, what I found is that your support team, your, your actual admin staff, need a different program than the agents. And so we use Follow Up Boss for the agents. And we used to have things that would show up in, in um, all clients or go go like that's the one we use that's our more traditional like kind of top producer one uh, the Dean version is gogoclients.com so that's the CRM that, that our admin uses but we would have things in there like the agent writing a thank you note or the agent checking in at one year and we really started to look at the stuff in there the agents would never go in right because why because they're busy selling mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. So I said, can the admin write a thank you note? So one by one, we just started taking things out and going, does the agent need to do that? Because when, when an agent on my team wakes up, all I want them to think about is... Selling a house. Is, right, working with clients or getting a new client. And the ISAs have really changed that too, because it used to be that they would get up and kind of you know, um, call internet leads. And if you think about the, the sort of scale of quality of, of leads, like I think at the very end is like kind of like cold calling, and then there's kind of door knocking, then there's internet lead, and then as you kind of progress further along, what you start to see is open houses, sign calls, past clients. So there's, there's a scale there, and so I realized that the agent's time, if they're gonna spend an hour What's better, to go with low probability or to go with like past clients, right? So it's, I was, and, and the ISA is, their only job is to focus on the churn, right? Is to kind of work this for six hours a day. But that's what it is, right? You look at that, they love it. They love it. It's their favorite thing in the world to, you know, churn through leads and call people and book appointments. And they, you know, and they're, 36 hours a week and they're done and they Just can make a six-figure income. <laughs> <laughs> they're licensed. No, my guys aren't. Oh, don't they? Yeah. It's a great territory, right? Because are they actually giving advice about real estate? No. And in fact, agents can screw up a phone call by giving advice. <laughs> right? Because what's the purpose is to book an appointment based on value. That's but what, all they do. But we can't have non-licensed agents knocking on doors, correct? No. Yeah, but it's yeah. a... Okay. You, or can? Can you probably could. It's a survey. No, you can't. You have people that deliver flyers on the door. Yeah. All you're doing is just with the dialogue is you're delivering a message. But I think the key distinction is advice. That's why it's a great territory, right? Is that you can't give advice if you're unlicensed. But my guys aren't. They're gathering information and they're setting up an appointment. Really, that's what it and is. And do they get paid on a percentage basis? Or yeah, so there's or? different thoughts about compensation for ISAs. I know we're kind of diverting, but it's an important thing yeah, to talk about. Um, 
You'll you'll hear people that uh, pay them almost like wait staff at a restaurant where they're you know ten dollars an hour and they might get you know ten percent of the gross or whatever. So our guys. Our thinking was, and this is based on a lot of people that have very established uh, departments, is, is pay a higher wage. Um, so we pay them $18 an hour, right? Both of them. And they get 5% of the, the gross commission. So if 10000 comes into the business, they get 500 as a result. Now, the, the team pays 250 of that, and then the agent who received that client pays 250 out of their <coughs> commission. So, yeah, whatever they get paid from our team is two fifty comes off the top as as kind of a conversion bonus that they. What make. does ISA stand for? Inside sales, right? So it's Associates. it's just people calling. Yeah, inside sales. The so awareness so. on that was um, my top agent because you can track everything through Follow Up Boss. The top agent on our team, Simone Palmer, made two uh, two thousand phone calls in a year, right? It's not bad. It's probably like what most agents should be doing. <laughs> and ISA. That's one an hour. For two thousand no, really. hours, I no, mean, for, the goal no, is like hundred no, calls. No, but when you think about it, when wow. you think about it, two thousand hours a year, that's typical, right? Well, yeah. No. So one an hour is really not that much. Yeah, but I mean, most people, it's like no, I mean, in one most hour. Most is way less. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, the, when you uh, say two thousand calls, this is actually contacting and actually reaching the person. No, contact no. is different. Pick no. up the phone and call somebody. Right. Two thousand attempts, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. Attempts. Okay. Yeah. And ISA on average should call between 150 or make two, probably 150 to 250 attempts a day. A day. Yeah. So really, Simone worked eight days, right? If you actually look at the pure boiled down concentrate version, she made eight days of calls. And I thought, what's the worst that can happen if we have someone calling for <laughs> 200 and something days in a big list of leads that none of us seem to have time for, mm -hmm. right? And it was like, hmm. <laughs> Could I make my investment back of 18 an hour? What's that, $36,000, right? If they don't convert anything, that's the worst case. Is a, but you know they're going to convert something. So I'm going to pay them 50 grand. Can they, can they make six transactions happen? And how, so many, how sure. many actually resulted in sales from the 2,000? Did you track that? Um, so sorry, from the 2,000 attempts? Calls, yeah. Um, yeah, we've, we've done all the numbers. Like usually agents on our team for internet leads need to make between probably, depending on their skill uh, and, and the type of lead that they're calling. Usually the sweet spot is about three to six months is where they get the best results. So something that came in last winter, that's their best lead right now. Um, <coughs> usually between 40 and 80 attempts to get an appointment. Right, and then if you look at the appointment, we actually look for a 30% no-show rate. Like that's what's, that's the win for us. Um, because if it's less than that, it means we're actually not sort of pursuing it with enough gravity. And if it's more than that, it means we're kind of sloppy on our dialogues. So that's, and that was one of the first challenges with our ISAs is we were getting about a 50 to 60% no-show rate. So we went back and fixed some of the things that would have caused that. The appointment confirmations, the value proposition, those kind of things. So it's a really interesting little science experiment when you look when at you like... When you say no-show rate, do you mean the appointment set? You, you set mean, the appointment and the client doesn't show up. And sure. Yeah, or a reschedule or whatever it is, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, so, so they didn't attend that meeting for whatever reason. Okay. Yeah. Did you say 30%? 30% is, is kind of our gold standard of what we look for. Isn't that high? That's because they're probably finding too far out and client A forgets or B. And again, like you said, they it's, don't it's have all, enough value. There, there's the probably a list of six right. or seven things that you can work on. If that, So if that's the symptom, the diagnosis is let's go over this, let's go over this, let's go over this. Um, Andy Harrington, um, who we met through Dan Plowman, was at Kathleen Black, and now is at Ken Goodfellow. Um, he's the one who's really been helping us with that. Uh, he's grown some of the biggest inside sales departments in Canada, right? So um, he's on the phone with our guys at least once a week, and then usually speaking to Melissa and I maybe once or twice a month as well. So. It's been fun. But yeah, anyway, that's the two CRM systems that we use. That's my focus for the agents. That's how I know they're going to make money and be happy. This was something that was really key for us, is that we, um, at the end of last year, got really clear about our values as a team. And um, our, our purpose and our mission and our vision, all that stuff is really crystal clear right now. 
and where where that came from is a conversation around you know the the Maple Leafs, the Blue Jays, the New England Patriots, whatever team it is, is they're assembled for what purpose? To win, it's to win the championship, sure. right? And so the question that was given to us is, what's your Stanley Cup? What's your championship? And that's really your purpose as a business, right? So for some of us, it may be something like with Sue, with, with charitable work, right? It, it, what is it? I don't know if I've ever been impressed with quantity. I think quantity is a fun scorecard. I mean, where we want to be is 500 transactions, but I, I'm not tied to that number because it means anything like we're number one or whatever it is, but we really looked at the quality of the transaction that as a team we all tend to rally around that. So if you look on the website, what does it say? It says um, we create five-star real estate experiences that people love talking about. That's the reason my business exists. And when we got that clarity, it was like it just transformed everything because the agents rallied around that. That's why the reviews became so important to us. Why? Because it means we're living on purpose, right? So it's more than just getting reviews because it's a business thing. It's that we genuinely believe in that five-star experience. That's what we want to deliver with every client. Um, so underneath there, uh, we came up with values. And these have gone through probably five different iterations. And, and you know, it's like, and, and where this comes into play, first of all, we talk about this at buyer listing deployments. So we would say to a client, uh, you know, when you choose a real estate agent, you're choosing them partly for what they're going to do for you, but also who they are. And, and so this is who we are as a collective and, and what I represent in the division as well. And this helps with recruiting because it very quickly sifts and sorts through the people that do you believe in this or don't? But you'll notice the top part is very much about the, um, the, the aspirational, the results, the, the uh, impact from kind of like a, it, it, like if, if you talk about the product, remember Joe used to talk about product and process? It's almost like the product, the qualitative thing is that we do sell homes for more money and less time. And so that's the top three right there. And the bottom three are really about the relationships about the, the long-term belief in having clients for life. Um, and, and so to the point where we've now, like relationships for example, is that we came up with these little sayings underneath is we believe in long-lasting meaning, meaningful relationships with our team and our clients. And then one of the agents suggested as we read through this, she said, well, what about the place we live too? Is that we want a relationship integrated with our community, so we added that in. This is read uh, at every team meeting. It's a little cultish, right? But we would actually go around and each person would say one of the values. And I, I know um, a couple of friends who also have a very strong value system within the team, and what they do is they actually uh, talk about who demonstrated giving this week. So they would actually, the values become more than just this sort of bland corporate mission statement. Is that it's actually a living, breathing thing. Is how did we exhibit, how did we embody these values of the business. And so that's how you can make this real. And that's when you start to notice if a word is off because it really starts to, and when we read this now, I know we got it right because there's almost that sigh where we just go, that's it. Right, like that, like it real, like you feel like one day we just went, oh, we changed this, changed that, and then it just landed. Yeah. So, pretty cool stuff. And then you know the taxi limo thing too. We talked about that kind of thing. Uh, first impressions at the office. These are all by referral only things, mm -hmm. right? Welcome sign, beverage menu. We've got little branded coffee cups that we use when somebody comes in. I know we've had some guests actually in this room that have come seeing us at our office. We've, uh, we've got a lot of uh, information that we love sharing with people. So we've got the Guide to Milton Neighborhoods. It's a 90-page guide that we created in a whole December. And it serves two, two purposes. <coughs> Number one is it says to people, what are the neighborhoods? So we have individual neighborhood profiles, what you like, what you dislike, 
The second part of it is what do you get for your money? Right? So, and the way we do that is we have price range A, B, C, D, and E, and then as the market changes, because you write a guide and they go, I don't want to change this all the time, but category A, all you need to look at is the homes in that page and go, how much do those sell for? Change the price range over six months. <laughs> so then it becomes a real simple guide to, uh, to adjust. If you guys want to copy that, I can post it, it's no problem. Uh, the guide to multiple prices, um, we also call, call that sold watch. Uh, it'll get into the mailing list. Market education, room by room reviews, super service directory, super agent directory, of which all of you guys are in that. Uh, so by geographic areas, we actually just have a directory of all the people that they should call. Um, we've got an offer to finish line thing, so it's like what utilities to call, you know, some things, make sure the rental agreements, the alarm system, so there's a, just a checklist that they can follow. Um, we do things like the stress relief kit. This like is Ken and Yetta's, right? It shows up actually on their counter or in their fridge, just like as a kind of fun surprise and delight <laughs> moment, usually a day or two after they list, right? Because that's when like, ah, everything's crazy, right? The rubber band to be flexible for showings. Um, I've always liked the idea on closing of instead of trying to make a big impact is that four singles beat a home run. So we try and do a lot of little things versus one big thing. Mm -hmm. And we also try and systematize it so the right thing happens at the right time. And so um, on moving day, the stress and, and the amount of things they need to deal with, let's take the food off of there. So we do that. Kelly arranges everything, puts it on the calendar, puts a link to where we need to pick it up. Um, we also have a moving kit, right? So we have all the stuff like the cleaning products and we put it in just kind of a basic Tupperware thing that they can use afterwards. Uh, garbage bags, light bulbs, that kind of thing. Survival kit. Sorry? Survival kit. Yeah, basically a surviving moving kit. Um, yeah, obviously loved ones are there on closing too. So. Um, we do a memory capsule where we've got, and this is the old branding, but it's the best picture we have of this stuff. Um, but we would put all their video and their pictures of their, uh, of their home that they sold, or if we can find it for the home that they bought, we just put it in there and just give them a copy so they have a record of it, right? And people take their feature sheets, but I want to give them something electronic they can save or whatever they want. Yeah. Um, another idea for that is you could actually go online and do like a, like a photo book that you actually give them a book to, mm -hmm. right? Um, but then we talk about with recruits is all the things that we're doing, right? So contests, we do a parks pass for Halton Parks during the summer, so we, we offer that out to clients. Uh, the newsletter, we still, I think we're going to scale back this year from two mail outs a month to one. This is the by referral newsletter. What we do is we pluck all the wording out and we insert it into a document that has our fonts and branding and everything else. Nice. So, because it looks bad, like the by referral yes. one looks like it's 1996, right? <laughs> it does. So, so it's like my assistant just makes it look a lot prettier. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's easy to do. Brilliant. So we use like Mac Pages, right? And and it's once the template's there, you kind of anchor things in. So whatever you cut and paste in just kind of flows around those those placeholders. You know, the quiz um, for the month, the quiz answer from last month. Uh, a couple of client events. I think we're going to do a roller skating party this summer. Nice. So that'll be fun, right? Um, but yeah, we love doing our movie nights. We had four theaters full for the Star Wars movie in December. Nice. Wow. And we did that at Four theaters. <laughs> four, four, four theaters. <laughs> Film.ca oh and Oakville. They're smaller theaters, but the, the event before the Star Wars Force Awakens, I think we had 480 people that came. And that's because you're publicly such a geek about all that, because I look at your Facebook page yeah. and all I see is Star Wars. Yeah. Music guy. We had a branding lady come in and she said, you know what's interesting is that your clients are all a little geeky, right? She kind of looked at them <laughs> and it's like, hey, you know what? Like, that's who we are. We're all a little goofy, right? Yeah, it's like that Seth Godin thing, like, we're all weird, right? <laughs> but it's carving out, out you're all weird. <laughs> we're weird, right? Like, who does this? I do it. Mm -hmm. And I sit down a listing presentation, like, and I and they like what is that? Oh well, here's what it is, right? Yeah. Chuck, you Lionel might... lights up too. It's pretty. Cool. <laughs> you just mentioned you had a branding lady come in. This is yeah. one of the questions I've been thinking as you're talking. Yeah. Is your marketing concepts, whether it's, you know, your hello or like some of the, 
Do you have an outside agency that's helping you come up with that? Or? Yeah, so this, this brand new lady was very expensive. We never ended up <laughs> choosing her. Um, like, it was a six-figure <laughs> bill. I'm like, yeah, not happy. Um, <laughs> but I know friends that have. Uh, Barry Cohen, Dan mm -hmm. Cooper, those guys actually hired her. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> the, uh, but Artifacts, which is now branded as Black 29 Group, those are the guys that did our website, they did all of our branding. Um, we've got some fun kind of Facebook ads that, that they've put out, that they've got all the sort of, everything is just lined up well, everything matches, all the fonts are the same. What was the cost? Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna say like for all the stuff, like for the actual branding concept. Did your cars and too? Proofing. Um, no side effects did the, okay. the cars. So they looked at some of the other stuff that we had, and then and then just put something together, one round of revisions, and we said this is perfect. They actually did an amazing job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna say like five thousand, probably for the brand. That's nothing. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that didn't include your website. No, the website was probably another fifteen to twenty thousand. Yeah, I was gonna say I had them quote on a website for me and it was fifteen thousand. Yeah. And I regret that I didn't go with them. Yeah. I went a cheap route and by the end of the day I spent nine and I would have had a way better site with them. So less gray and hair and wrinkles. Artifact. What I like about them is they really understand the the consumer standpoint. Because there's a lot of programmers that don't program but they don't understand psychology. Oh, yeah. These guys really make good suggestions about that are effective. Um, the usability, the way that people interact with your yeah. site, I find that that's why I stay with them. So Artifacts is A-R-T-I-F-A-C-T-S, just no, like it it's, sounds. it's F-A-K-T, but remember, they're now branded as Black 29 Group. Um, they've merged with Goodfellow. We've done a lot of stuff with Ken Goodfellow's group, too. Um, we were with Dan Plowman probably around the time when, when I... I Actually, Kathleen Black would have been our coach around the time mm -hmm. that we kind of stopped coming to Star. Mm -hmm. And and so Kathleen had some changes in, in her life and everything else. Um, her business changed. And so that's when we jumped over to Ken Goodfellow. What I liked about Ken is that we, we kind of said, okay, this is our GCI. Um, you know, this is what the business looks like. And right away he goes... Okay, so you don't have enough of this, you're struggling with this, and it's, mm -hmm. it was like five minutes, we go, man, how does this guy know? And, but he just, because he's seen the guys doing ten times what we're doing, he's like, you're at level one, and I know what level five to ten looks like. And, and so that was really enlightening to have someone, so, but my thing is, and I know Wanda still coaches with Kathleen, is, you know, for the systems, um, as far as uh, call scripts, buyer and listing presentation structure, uh, hiring system, that was all Kathleen. Those were the building blocks. Now where we're at is, is looking at things like how to be a CEO, how to be a leader on the team. Those are things that Ken brings to us. Um, things like HR issues and that, he, that's what he's really good at, right? Is to see the 800 feet above you. Um, yeah, this has even changed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually doing a video anymore. I kind of got sick of it. It's yeah. been eight years. I was years. wondering how long yeah. it would take. <laughs> yeah. it's, it, it was, was eight years. And, and what I found is there wasn't, there wasn't